As Starship's fifth integrated flight test nears, major progress has been made at Starbase in the past week in preparation for this highly anticipated mission. Both Starship 30 and Super Heavy Booster 12 are currently undergoing final inspections and checks at the build site before proceeding to the next phase of testing, the wet dress rehearsal. This final pre-launch test involves loading the rocket with propellant and simulating a countdown to verify all systems are ready for flight. As per the developments, Flight 5 is currently anticipated in September, however, the launch timeline is still subject to the completion of the licensing process. Responding to an inquiry from NASA Space Flight, the FAA said that they are continuing their rigorous review of SpaceX's license modification request for this flight. The agency emphasized that the license will only be issued once SpaceX has fully complied with all safety, environmental, and regulatory requirements concerning both the launch and landing operations. Over the past several weeks, SpaceX teams have been intensively working on the launch tower arms and related launch pad infrastructure, introducing a series of upgrades and repairs aimed at ensuring the success of the upcoming booster catch operations. The majority of these recent modifications stem from data collected during booster catch practice tests conducted in June and more recently. Those tests provided critical insights into the performance of the tower arms, particularly focusing on how quickly the arms can respond and stabilize after impact, the exact force exerted on the booster during a catch, and the nature of vibrations that could affect the integrity of the catch. Extensive welding activities have been observed in the past week at various locations in efforts to reinforce the tower arms and the carriage. Teams continue to install doubler plates over the welded joints of the arms to strengthen the structure. By distributing the load over a larger area, these plates enhance the structural integrity of the arms, ensuring they can withstand the forces exerted during a booster catch without failure. With at least 32 weld areas currently being reinforced, this upgrade is crucial for preventing structural failures during future catch attempts. In addition to these reinforcements, SpaceX removed the cushioning pads from the landing rails after the most recent booster catch practice tests. These pads, which are designed to absorb impact forces and minimize vibrations, were likely damaged during the test. New pads are now being installed on the tower arms to ensure a smooth and secure catch of the returning booster. It seems that the pads will be installed along the entire length of the arm. Another notable change involves the removal of the close limit bumpers from the tower arms. These bumpers are essential safety features that prevent the arms from overclosing and potentially making unintended contact with the rocket during lifting and catching operations. The bumpers may have been damaged during practice tests, requiring their replacement or possibly indicating a re-evaluation of their design. SpaceX has also replaced several gas canisters on the arm carriage. These tanks hold pressurized gas to drive some of the moving parts of the tower arms and carriage. The data from the practice tests likely indicated a need for upgraded canisters that can store gases at higher pressures, enabling swift actuation of the tower arm components. Similar gas canisters were seen being replaced on the carriage for the second launch tower, stationed at the Sanchez site. This means SpaceX is making changes to both Tower 1 and Tower 2 infrastructures simultaneously, based on the catch practice test data. Additionally, the practice tests revealed that the tower arms experienced excessive bouncing after impacting the test tank. This vibration issue must be addressed before the fifth integrated flight test, as it could jeopardize the success of the booster catch. Once all necessary upgrades and repairs are completed, SpaceX may conduct another round of catch practice tests with test tank B14.1 to validate the improvements. Only after SpaceX is fully confident that the tower arms can successfully catch the returning booster in mid-air will they proceed with the fifth integrated flight test. Work is also ongoing on other areas of the pad infrastructure to prepare them for Flight 5. Scaffoldings have been installed surrounding the portion of the tower where the tower arms will sit during the booster catch operations. This likely involves adding structural reinforcements to ensure that the tower can handle the immense stresses associated with catching and stabilizing a booster. Additionally, attention has been given to the booster and ship quick disconnect mechanisms, which supply electrical power and propellants to the rocket stages. More upgrades and fixes to the launch pad hardware can be expected in the coming days after finishing the ongoing work. Overall, the sheer volume of upgrades and fixes that the launch tower and the pad infrastructure have received over the past few months is remarkable. While the launch vehicle might be ready for a September liftoff, the ongoing work suggests that SpaceX might need additional time to complete all necessary tests and ensure that all systems are fully prepared. As the FAA has emphasized, safety remains the top priority for this launch, particularly since SpaceX will be attempting a mid-air recovery of the Super Heavy booster for the first time. The construction of the second launch pad is advancing rapidly at the launch site. 
With the stacking of tower sections now complete, teams are focusing on finalizing critical systems essential for the tower's operational functionality. This includes installing the elevator system, drawworks mechanism, and tower arm carriage tracks, along with connecting the extensive plumbing and electrical wiring that runs throughout the structure. Additionally, the columns are being filled with concrete to enhance the structural stability of the tower. Once all these systems are in place and tested, the tower arms and carriage, currently located at the Sanchez site, will be transported to the launch site for integration into the tower. However, there are still no updates regarding the Starship Quick Disconnect mechanism for Tower 2. Work on the Pad 2 flame trench continues in parallel with the tower construction. Piling operations are currently ongoing, laying the groundwork for the trench's construction. At the build site, teams have completed stacking the tank sections of Starship 33, the first Starship Block 2 prototype. The aft flaps of the ship were spotted at the build site recently, and they will be installed soon. Following this, the focus will shift to installing the remaining heat tiles, completing external plumbing, and finalizing the electrical wiring. Notable changes in the Block 2 Starship include the redesign of the forward flaps and their repositioning on the nose cone the installation of stringers that connect the nose cone and payload bay to enhance structural integrity, and a redesign of the methane downcomer to improve propellant flow to the engines. Please check out my previous videos to learn about these and other Block 2 Starship upgrades in detail. Links are in the description. Inside the high bay, teams are reinstalling heat tiles on Ship 31. Similar to Ship 30, all of Ship 31's tiles will be replaced with new and stronger heat tiles in the coming weeks. Once this process is completed, the ship will be sent to the Massey's site for static fire testing. Now, let's discuss the latest updates from the world of science and technology. SpaceX experienced a significant setback when its Falcon 9 rocket's first stage failed to land successfully on a drone ship after completing a Starlink mission. The Falcon 9 rocket lifted off from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station on August 28, carrying 21 Starlink satellites into orbit. The mission proceeded as planned initially, with a successful stage separation, followed by the boost backburn and the rocket's return to Earth. However, the first stage's landing on the drone ship did not go as planned. The booster appeared to be on track for a successful landing, but, shortly after contact, flames erupted from the base of the booster and it tipped over and exploded, resulting in its total destruction within seconds. Despite this, SpaceX confirmed that the upper stage of the rocket successfully deployed all 21 Starlink satellites about an hour after liftoff. The company is now analyzing flight data to identify the cause of the failure. While the exact cause of the anomaly is still under investigation, preliminary assessments indicate that a failure in one of the landing legs may have contributed to the mishap. This failure could have been due to the booster landing at a higher than intended velocity, potentially caused by issues with engine burn timing. SpaceX is expected to release an official statement once the investigation is complete. The failed first stage, identified as B-1062, had an impressive record since its debut in November 2020, completing 23 successful launches and briefly leading SpaceX's fleet of first stages that performed most of the company's launches. The mishap on Wednesday is particularly notable as it is the first landing failure for Falcon 9 since February 2021. During that launch, one of the nine Merlin engines on the booster prematurely shut down due to damage sustained during ascent. This malfunction resulted in a failed landing attempt, causing the booster to miss the drone ship after completing its entry burn. Since then, SpaceX has achieved a remarkable streak of 267 successful landings, excluding launches where the booster was expended. The Federal Aviation Administration has mandated an investigation into the incident, which is standard protocol for any launch anomaly. The agency has also grounded the Falcon 9 rocket until the investigation is concluded. This decision may seem unusual, as booster landings are typically considered secondary to the primary mission of payload delivery. However, according to the updated FAA criteria, failure to complete a launch or re-entry as planned requires an investigation. In 2021, the Falcon 9 was not grounded following a landing failure because the criteria in place at that time were less stringent. The last grounding of the Falcon 9 occurred in July due to a second stage failure that compromised a batch of Starlink satellites. SpaceX resumed flights 15 days later after receiving an expedited return to flight approval from the FAA. The latest grounding could impact SpaceX's upcoming missions, including the highly anticipated Polaris Dawn mission, initially slated for launch as early as August 30. After weeks of careful deliberation, NASA has officially announced that astronauts Butch Wilmore and Suni Williams will not return to Earth aboard Boeing's Starliner spacecraft. Instead, has requested SpaceX's Crew Dragon to ferry the astronauts back from the International Space Station. 
The Starliner's troubles began shortly after its launch on June 5, when the spacecraft encountered significant issues during its journey to the ISS. The spacecraft experienced thruster malfunctions and helium leaks in its propulsion system, resulting in the shutdown of five out of its 28 reaction control thrusters. While four of these thrusters were later restored, one remains offline. Despite these challenges, Starliner successfully docked with the ISS on June 6, allowing Will Moore and Williams to join the existing crew. However, the spacecraft issues have delayed the astronauts' return, which was initially planned for June 14. Since the anomaly, Boeing and NASA have been working tirelessly to address the issues. They conducted thruster test firings on the ground and on the Starliner docked at the ISS to replicate the failure, identify its cause, and implement fixes. These tests revealed a bulging Teflon seal in an oxidizer valve, potentially restricting nitrogen tetroxide flow to the thrusters. After weeks of extensive evaluations, NASA engineers concluded that uncertainties surrounding the performance of the thrusters during critical phases of re-entry made it too risky to transport the astronauts back on Starliner. Consequently, the agency now plans to undock Starliner from the station without a crew and return to Earth as early as September 6. To accommodate this change, the SpaceX Crew-9 mission, the ninth operational NASA commercial crew program flight, will launch no earlier than September 24, with two of its originally assigned four people on board, thereby freeing up seats for Williams and Wilmore. Ultimately, that Crew Dragon spacecraft will return to Earth as planned in February 2025, bringing back both the Crew-9 astronauts and the Starliner crew. Following the uncrewed return of Starliner in September, engineers will assess the spacecraft's safety and performance issues and evaluate whether another crewed test flight is necessary before certifying Starliner for regular crew rotation missions. NASA has decided that Butch and Sonny will return with Crew-9 next February uh, and that Starliner uh, will return uncrewed we want to further understand the root causes and understand the design improvements so that the Boeing Starliner will serve as an important part of our assured crew access to the ISS. Thank you for tuning in for the latest science news and Starship updates. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, leave a comment, and share it with your friends. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you never miss an episode.